in the mail, MS sex games from Japan. Collecting without fail, those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with a little bit of a package of stuff from Japan. Now, assuming we actually open the bottom of the box, so it shouldn't affect it too much. Now, because freight has gone crazy <coughs> with Japan, I sort of let this um, auction go for a fair while to basically the limit of what I could do. Um, so, there are <coughs> a fair number of items in here. Um, most of it quite cheap. Just trying to fill out a box and then something else came out that I really wanted um, which then tipped it over to the next level so then I left it <coughs> even longer and added a few other things. So there's quite an assortment of different items in here. Um, some bargains, other things I paid a little bit more for but they're well worth it. But definitely some bargains and the first one I've actually encountered was a bargain. <clears throat> and a game that I thought I'd never get a hold a copy of. So it's for an obscure system that I have. I don't have very many games for it, um, but well, I'm lucky enough to have a few. It's for the Sword M5, the CGL Sword M5, and it's one of my favourite arcade games, and it's Bosconian. Now I don't know how close this is to the MSX version. The MSX version is a brilliant version, um, and usually the Namcot titles as it would have, uh, they made them, actually made them for the sword first and um, then ported them across to the MSX as well. Um, it would be interesting to see the differences, but I'm very, very pleased at getting that one. They don't have top ladles and no boxes. Um, I mean, they obviously did come in boxes originally. Now, I don't have any joypad controllers, so we're going to have to use the keys, but um, very pleased to get that one. So. This will probably flip through quite a few systems here. Uh, once again, they're all very well wrapped. Um, <clears throat> and then the Bosconian was um, quite cheap indeed. Normally, the um, titles for the Sword M5 go for a fair bit of money. Um, it must have, I think I got it for like $5. So that's an absolute bargain for that. Uh, next one, it was only a couple of dollars. Um, I haven't had a title for the Game Gear for a while, and it's also an arcade game that I don't mind. It's Pengo, and it's boxed. A game I definitely didn't have for the Game Gear. Um, none of my Game Gears are actually working at the moment, though, so it'll be a little while before I get to play it. But everything is there. It looks pretty new in its box. So it could have been new old stock <coughs> sitting somewhere. Um, <laughs> I'm going to flip systems again, I think. I do not remember there being any more Game Gear stuff in there, so we're pretty safe. And there's a fair few stuff in here. I'm not going to be able to do gameplays of everything, so I have to be a bit selective. So, the next one is one more title towards my full SG-1000 collection. It's actually in really good condition. Uh, it's one of the my, uh, one of the my card, Sega my card games, and it's Black Onyx, which is a dungeon crawler. That's in really, really good condition. A few copies of this have popped up on occasion. Missed out on them each time. Um, you know, this sort of a title with some sort of a nice to have title, or not one particularly been searching for, so I've left it for a while and it's not particularly rare. Copies of it um, come up on a reasonably regular basis, although not necessarily complete. And that's in really, really good condition. So I'm very pleased with that one. So one more title for the SG-1000 collection. <coughs> so the inspection here, I believe that is all the SG-1000s. Um, now next we have, sorry, just take my sticker off. It's 
right in the way. My title for the Japanese GameCube. As I said, these are really going to jump all over the place. Once again, just a cheapy uh, Mission Impossible for the game, Japanese GameCube. I quite like my GameCube titles. This is not one that I had for the PAL GameCube back in the day. Um, I probably would have bought it back in the day if I had had the chance. But the GameCube titles over here on the shelves just disappear. Which seems to happen a lot with um, Nintendo um, systems as far as staying on shelves and things like that. Okay, now flipping systems again. We're into CD based games. I believe to pad this out, I um, got a few uh, Dreamcast games. Now, some of these may be pure guesses of um, whether or not they are a genre that I'm into, and I'm actually questioning myself whether this one is. Um, it's Space Griffin. I saw a Gundam on the front, so I was hoping it was a mech game. Um, I'm really not sure. It's double covered in plastic. I can't take the sticker off at the moment. So I have not heard all of that one. So Space Griffin. All these were extremely cheap. Um, and this is once again another... I can take the sticker off this one. <coughs> another one for the RPG collection, but this time for the Dreamcast. I believe it's an RPG. It's got, it looks reaction or orientator might actually be quite playable. So Granada was at two. Some quite nice screenshots on there. Because I, I mean I realise I've hardly got any Dreamcast games at all. So I thought I'd try padding them out a little bit. Um, now this one had a you know picture of a flying craft on the front so oh, take it, it had to have something to do with flying and shooting, so I'm going to have to look it up though, I have absolutely no idea what the title is looks like it's a 3D one though could be worth a play uh, we're going to flip systems and we have uh, for the Saturn case, it's got a crack in it though, Assault Suit Linus so we might need a new case cover for that one. I haven't played that one, but if it's a, if I, you know, I said if it's a decent mech game, I'll be most appreciated. I mean, based on the Assault Suit Linus, they were a horizontal scrolling, uh, walking mech and shoot 'em up sort of thing. So this one looks very much in that vein. So that could be a good game. Just needs a new uh, front cover. Uh, there are some more CD titles. As usual, everything is very well prepped. Right, so some more Dreamcast titles. Um, House of the Dead 2. We haven't played. It does have a bit of damage on the back there. We're going to have to Look out for some cheap uh, Dreamcast games. If that's the case. Um, flipping over to the Saturn, we have Mist, uh, which has got virtually no text in it anyway, so it'll probably be perfectly playable in the Japanese version. It's all using symbology and, and hard puzzles. Um, I'm sure the Saturn version would be quite a decent game. I don't have the power one, so that's a good find. Now, this one I was very clear that it was a Gundam game because it says it clearly on the front. It is Gundam Rise from the Ashes Side Story 79. So, as you can see, I do like my um, Gundam games. Um, occasionally get. Um, PlayStation games, um, and this one's called Star Ixium. It's actually got a not for resale thing on the back as well, and it's by Namco, so I don't think I'll go too far wrong. Uh, ooh, nice blue disc too, looks at. That will be interesting to try out. 
see what we've got there. Alright, another pack of CDs. So none of these um, were very much money. So this is all fairly cheapy stuff to go with the couple of items that I really wanted. Um, just to make the shipping pay off a little bit and might as well grab these titles when I can. Now I have a quite a large cross system load runner collection. I didn't actually realise there was a load runner game for the PlayStation. Uh, so when browsing the PlayStation section, I found Load Runner The Legend Returns. Which I think, I don't think I've got this, uh, this Load Runner The Legend Returns for the Saturn. I don't think I've got it because it keeps on going for a lot of money. So, obviously far less interest on the PlayStation side of things. Okay, just the way they're coming out of the wrapping here. This might actually be the same. Yeah, that's a Bando the best, so... Oops. <laughs> Trouble when you swap the thing go from pictures. Um, they're the same game, so if anybody's after the best one, I actually quite like that art, but... Yeah, anyway. Not bad. Trouble when you do auctions over such a long period of time. Ah, now, uh, a game I didn't have for power um, at all, so I'm not sure how playable the Japanese version of it is, so it's Biohazard 3 Last Escape, so that's Resident Evil 3. I have Resident Evil 1 and 2, but not 3. And I don't believe I've ever played it. So, we can, we can see what it's like. It may, it may be playable. And, um, Oh, pardon me. I put a cheeky bit on this and got it, and I actually already have a copy of it. But um, <clears throat> uh, if you can't fault me for getting it for the price, I got it, and it's a copy of Dracula X. And the PlayStation version is very, very good. That's one of my favourite Japanese PlayStation games. So whichever one is the better copy, I shall keep, and the other one will be up for sale or trade. So it's Tiddy's version, it looks in very good condition. It actually does look in very good condition. Um, I'm not sure there's supposed to be a book in the middle, I have to check my other copy. I always swap things around, but um, very nice indeed. Alright, we've finished all the CDs. Got a couple of peripherals in here as well. Oh, here we go, here's a system I haven't had a game for for quite a while. It's a game for the Mega Drive. Um, once again, cheap, sneaky bid. It looked interesting, and it's called Zoom. I've never heard of this one before. I assume it was available in Western countries as well, but I quite like the the Japanese box art. Right. Yeah. Now we go to some of the items that I specifically bid in one and what this box is all about. Okay. We'll save the best to last. So <clears throat> first one is quite simply a copy of um, Zelda, a Link to the Past I think it is, isn't it? It's not too bad copy. I do believe this doesn't have a manual though. Copies of this come up all the time. People pay far too much for them, so I just wanted a copy to have a copy. So I am missing the manual, but everything else is there. Um, and I mean, I'll probably play that using um, my. Um, my brain's gone. My Retron 5 with translation patch anyway, so just nice to have a copy. Now, two very special games. A game I've been after for ages, uh, constantly up here. It does go for a lot of money. Um, I think I did very well. It's double wrapped here, I'll wrap it later. It is Super Castlevania. 
which lots of people have said is a good one of the best versions so I'll be most pleased to have a go at this one and see what it's like um, I have never played it on the Super Famicom or the SNES so very much looking forward it looks to be good condition inside the plastic here so um, no, I don't want to Use the trusty knife to help a bit here. Just want to see what the box and stuff is like. As in copies of this come up quite often, but they go for a lot of money. Um, you just got to keep at it until you get one that's in within your price range. I think that's in very pretty good condition. A little bit of damage there, but otherwise not too bad. I am quite happy with that. And it looks like everything's in there as well. So good condition cartridge and we have the manual. So very much looking forward to playing that one. And next, and this is a really bit, I mean, try not to get my these games too fast because like the um, Tyra Jaguar trying to get them and enjoy them and play them I mean I still have um, Super Metroid sitting in my Super Famicom just there now and Super Castlevania is going to um, keep me busy but opportunity to get this title as well it is Contra on uh, the Super Famicom uh, and I've once again never played this game uh, lots of people rave about how good this one is. Um, I do quite like the NES uh, Contra game. Uh, I've only played the first one of that. Um, I've never played the second one. This looks in pretty decent condition. So, another one that I've been after for quite some time. Um, and um, finally got a copy. Once again, for a price, I mean, some of these have been going for more than a hundred US sometimes, so there's no way I can afford justify pay that amount of money for a game, complete or not. And this one is complete and has absolutely everything. And the inside is in very good condition. I mean, I've seen loose copies of this go for close to a hundred dollars, and this is just silly. Um, I, I do believe I probably only got these because the number of bidders seems to have backed off a bit when all of the price rises um, happened recently with the freight. Um, so, you know, the, if you win one item, you've got to um, pay at least $30 US postage. But So they've got a, like a minimum box size. So this is the second box size, I suppose, up above a little box. Now there's more items in here, um, now we have one more game, and this is the game that actually uh, did the increase to the bigger box. So as you notice there were no MSX titles here whatsoever, nothing came up that I either uh, didn't have or um, a crazy bidding war uh, ensued and I got uh, knocked out of, out of play, but this is a game that I've wanted for the MSX for absolute ages. I do believe it is completely different to the ColecoVision version and so I'll be interested to see what it's like and it is, and I would have been happy getting this loose but it is a complete copy of IRM's Moon Patrol so it's in one of these hard plastic cases with the I think so, you see the screenshots are already qu quite different to the Coleco and the Coleco Vision one, remember, was an unreleased, not quite finished Atari Soft game. Um, whereas this has been converted by somebody else, I believe. Now inside, look at that lovely art on the on the cartridge. So no instructions, but that doesn't matter at all. Most important things is the box and the cartridge. That is a gorgeous cartridge. And I said, this is a game I have wanted for a very, very long time for the MSX. Um, so, paid a bit of money for it, but nowhere near as much as um, some of the other MSX titles have been going lately. And uh, very, very happy to get that one. Alright, now, the rest of the items 
Oh, all accessories, unless I've missed something small. Okay, just simply to match my uh, Sega Saturn, which I got, uh, which I've got boxed, and all the accessories that I have boxed, we have a Japanese Sega Saturn controller. Once again, there was a whole lot of these things going very cheap, so we've only made a couple of dollars for this. So um, it's good to have a spare and nice to have one box. Now another item that I don't have for the PlayStation, I have um, guns for the Saturn, uh, but I do not have one for the PlayStation at all. How or uh, Japanese? Not that, you, not that um, guns are region based. But we have the Namco Gun-Con, which hooks in, we've got a special set of wiring that hooks in, so we'll have to work out how to use this. I don't think, well it says for, for Japan only, I do have a Japanese PlayStation though, so do not stress. That's it, really good nick, I didn't expect that to be in such good nick. Looks like it's sat on the shelf, so we've got a Japanese price tag on there, and the structure has been unwrapped though, so the gun is definitely in there, and all these cables and all that AV stuff, so very cool indeed, very happy to get that, so not 100% sure I actually have a PlayStation game, it's incredibly musty. Um, the PlayStation games we actually play that with, but um, we shall put that down to play with later. Now, I do have an arcade stick for the Dreamcast, but I actually only have one Dreamcast controller. A whole lot of controllers come up. This one definitely needs a bath, though. It is matches. It matches the colour of my other one, so. A standard Dreamcast controller, so no um, memory unit in it, but I have spares of those. Okay, nice long cable, seems in good nick, just needs a bit of a, needs to have a bit of a bath. Um, ouch. Trying to unwrap things with fingernails doesn't always work. Another satin controller, let's put a cheap bit on this one. It is, um, there was a different variant of the satin in Japan uh, with different coloured buttons and things. That's really just a spare controller. I actually think um, my fellow um, podcast mate Aaron actually needed a spare cable to fix a, um, a satin uh, arcade stick. So, I don't know, might give that to him. So he can do that. I don't really need to collect um, joystick variants. Along the same veins, he was, Aaron was also after some um, controllers. So this little pack of Super Famicom controllers was only about two dollars, and they actually look in really nice condition. And it's nice having one. I mean, I can use one of those in the Retron. Retron 5 inside, they're actually hardly dirty at all. I'm actually rather surprised. So, what else do we have in here? Lots and lots and lots of bubble wrap. One more thing. I have arcade sticks for most of my systems. Uh, it's mainly because my Let's face it, my hands are buggered, right? So I can't use normal controllers for any length of time. It, it hurts too much. So I am hoping, yes it is, good. I've been, arcade sticks for the Super Famicom do not come up that often. And I finally got this one. I don't know whether it's any good. This micro switch there, CPS Fighter A it is. I'm not sure about the buttons, but we'll have to see what they're like. Cords, seen a rough life back there. We've got some turbo buttons. That's not a bad 
Not a bad one. Put in four and eight mode. Um, needs a bath, but other than that, finally an arcade stick for the Super Famicom. All right, um, that was a very large unboxing section, I know, but there were lots of items in there. I am not going to do gameplays of all of these games, otherwise I will never get this video out to you guys. So, what follows will be the games that I want to play the most. So you can always be guaranteed there's going to be a gameplay of Moon Patrol and um, uh, I would say Super Castlevania and Contra, and we'll just play it by ear with some of the other games. All right, let's go do that now. All right, so here we go with the lovely music that I remember from my childhood playing this in the arcades. We have Moon Patrol, the MSX. Um, very interesting, so it looks pretty good so far, um, and it does look different than the um, ColecoVision version, which was never actually formally released because it wasn't quite finished. Um, it was released as a homebrew um, rede redevelopment by um, Collectivision, the guys that release on my titles. So, but this MSX one actually came back out back in the day, so it's not by Atari soft like that one. It looks pretty good. The main chip's not quite as detailed as. the markers on the ground so you can see your, your part progression through the Cat 
visitor as well. <clears throat> and enemy ships is just mean <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, quite a good version I think I'm going to enjoy this uh, it's obviously going to be a challenge to get through it but very very impressive um, not quite the same I mean, the Coleco one's gone more for the copying the arcade stages I suppose this is almost like a Moon Patrol variant, but it's got a lot of the elements there. The music's as good. Sound effects aren't too bad. Um, even the zero sequence is um, it's not too bad. I love Moon Patrol music. Alright, I do have lots of games to go in this section, so we better go on to the next one. Alright, so here we go with Bosconian. Looks uh, <clears throat> like our capture might be a bit. Uh, black and whitish, so I do apologise for that. I can only play with keys too, so do not have a controller. So I'll do my best. keyboard all the time. Uh, interesting that the capture is not getting colour. Um, it is colour on my screen so I do apologise for that. Um, anyway, a Sword M5 game. You don't get to see those very often. Um, and really pleased about getting that. So 1981, that's two years before MSX. Um, so the Sword system came out very, very early on. 
and um, obviously very early attempt at Nemco at um, uh, converting some of their arcade games. Um, and it's interesting to see where they went from here to the MSX version that came out later. Alright, let's try our next game. Okay, here we go with Super Castlevania, and I'm also trying out the Capcom stick as well.
fucking light it.
Oops, no. Oh, that's probably it. That's as far as I'm going to get this stage, and obviously, um, yeah. <sighs> Once you understand the controls a bit, um, uh, not a bad game. Obviously, a game I'll be playing a fair bit when I get a bit more time. Alright, let's try our next game. Right, so next we have Contra Spirits. Another game I have never played in my life. Everybody reckons it's a pretty decent game though, so... Let's see. Do not expect me to be any good at it. Um, but it looks awesome. Um, gonna take me a very long time to get anywhere in it. Right, let's try our next game. Right, so I thought I'd plug in uh, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past number three, just so we could have a quick look at it. I'm not 
seriously doubt I'm going to be able to play it. Got a few save files on there. It's a bit different in the way you select the characters. Obviously, the text is going to be in Japanese. And it does have a fair start, so, a bit to get through. Yay! Got our 
sword. Tron 5 inside. <laughs> Alright, um, uh, I don't want these gameplays to get too long, so I'll probably skip most of the stuff. I just might play the, um, uh, the shooter on uh, the PlayStation a couple of other games. We'll see. Alright, let's try the next one. Oh, I forgot we had the Load Runner game as well. I love Load Runner games, so let's give that a try. So, trying out a newer PlayStation controller. seem to be enemies on this first stage which is unusual for a, a load runner game. A bit of a 
hum. My PlayStation 2. Okay, now we've got to do a bit of digging to get to some things. to this area she can't dig through. Let's have a little done. So it's pretty easy. Considering we don't have any enemies, so Ah, now we have some enemies, right. Mm, Float them over. Now the enemies should um, pick up ones and steal them and move them around. Obviously climb out of holes, so timing when you dig the hole. So it closes over the top of them and then thus kills them. Oh no! I've fallen in a hole and died. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, so I've never actually played one of the modern load runner games before. That actually looks quite interesting. Um, when I get a bit more time, I'll give it a bit more of a go. Right, so here we go, I start Axiom. I've just completed the training combat simulator, but I forgot to press record. By the way, this is a, a Munchkin Vega. So you didn't get to see that, so that was, it's very much like Star Raiders. Um, now I think we have a bit of a story moment. I think that was just trying to get us used to the, um, the controls. Right, so. so it's a 3D game like Star Raiders. You have a map.
Black Star Riders, we have the map. Probably slightly cooler graphics.
another cat. Incoming humanity, last battle. Probably get attacked by a cat again, no. I'm just using the standard Dreamcast controller, not the arcade stick, but I have no idea what I'm doing, so Still made me put the time in on the Dreamcast, and maybe there's a battery in the Dreamcast I need to put in.
phase. Um, I most certainly have. I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.